Liberals and Islamists have forged a strange political partnership. I'm Matt Barber, Vice President of Liberty Council Action. Joining me in studio today is Ron Miller, Associate Dean with Liberty's Helms School of Government. Ron, I recently wrote an article titled Defeating the Islamo-Progressive Axis and talked about a few things in this article that we can kind of break down today. Uh, certainly, I pointed out how there seems to be a double standard when it comes to the way that liberals, prog the progressive establishment, treats uh, Christians and the way they treat uh, Muslims. Uh, you often hear liberals screaming from the rooftops the term Islamophobia, uh, along with their favorite term homophobia. Uh, I've never heard in my in my life a liberal uh, decry the uh, uh, Christophobia, the anti-Christian sentiments that uh, is gaining quite a bit of steam here. In the United States, I addressed this in uh, my column, Defeating the Islamo-Progressive Axis, and it started out by pointing out a recent story that Reuters, a headline screams, bacon found at New York Muslim celebration probed as a possible hate crime. And I, Ron, I pointed out how th the fact that there would be bacon, that somebody may have left bacon at a Muslim picnic in a public park, that's being probed by law enforcement as a hate crime. But in the article, I point out how a group of radical homosexual activists stormed a church in Lansing, Michigan, a few years ago, started throwing out condoms, uh, screaming, Jesus was gay, and and uh, really terrorizing the children and the women that were there uh, and, and engaging in gross uh, um displays of sexual per perversion in front of the children, not only were they not charged with a hate crime, they weren't even given a ticket, and police, uh, they didn't send any officers there to the scene. They sent instead a reporter. That just underscores, I think, this double standard that we see from the left in the way that they treat so-called Islamophobia versus uh, anti-Christian sentiments. And the the double standard is confusing to me when I look at the actual doctrine of the two faiths in question because it would seem that the Christian faith would be more compatible with their ideas than the Islamic faith, particularly when we're talking about how they treat women and how they treat people uh, of different sexual tendencies like the homosexual community. Um, if you look at anything that's going on in Islamic countries, uh, those two groups in particular are singled out for persecution, uh, for um, uh, torture. And you have to ask yourself, are these people really thinking this through? Because we look at the history of Christianity. It was Christianity more than any other faith that helped to elevate women. And we are much more tolerant of differences um, than anyone would willing, be willing to admit in this culture, but certainly more tolerant than anyone around the world. So I'm not sure what they're thinking of other than the fact that because Christians are in the majority, somehow they must be bad. <laughs> well, as you point out, Christ was a revolutionary, uh, uh, went completely against the culture of the day and, and said that that women are equal to men and 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 said people caught up in sexual sin, uh, like the woman at the temple, uh, people caught up in homosexuality. I condemn you not. Now go and sin no more. Not so much with the Islamic faith uh, uh, or, or socio-political uh, uh, construct, is, which is really what it is. It, it says, uh, for instance, that homosexuals, uh, once they're discovered, are under, under Islamic law, Sharia law, which is not fringe. This is mainstream Islamic law we're talking about here. Based on the Quran, uh, they are to be summarily executed. W women are treated under Islamic law. As chattel, as property, they can be beaten or even killed with impunity for any reason or for no reason at all. And so it makes you wonder, it makes you scratch your head and say, why is it that, that uh, homosexual activists are the first to scream Islamophobia if we point out the bloody precepts uh, uh, central to mainstream uh, Islamic belief? Or if we, you know, feminists, uh, you know, they're the first to say to defend women uh, in, in Muslim cultures and say, well, that's just cultural diversity. We need to respect that culture, even though they can be beaten with impunity. The double standard is blaring. You have to sit back and say, what is driving this? Well, I think that uh, liberals, by and large, uh, see the world in segments. 
Uh, they like to, to break it up into uh, different categories. And the Islamic faith falls into a couple of categories that they tend to be very sympathetic to. Uh, they're a minority. And anything that's a minority is generally considered to be uh, a good thing in their mind because that means that they are sisters and brothers in the struggle, as it were. Mm -hmm. uh, they uh, look at them as a uh, minority faith, uh, as a minority in terms of culture, as a minority in terms even of appearance in many cases. And so I think sometimes they get their identity politics synapses crossed and it blinds them to some of the more obvious differences that they would have with the Muslim faith if they really took the time to examine it. I, I think you're you're dead on there, I, but I also think I, th I want to peel the onion back one more layer here. I think it goes a little deeper than that, and I think it it can be summarized by the by the old axis: the enemy of my enemy is my friend, mm -hmm. and that's where this strange socio political partnership, this axis, if you will, I think develops. Who is the common enemy of both progressive thought, uh, secular humanism, and uh, Islamic thought. The common enemy is are, is the Judeo-Christian alliance, which is an alliance, which is is rooted uh, in in biblical belief, and which is certainly the foundation of, of, of our founding fathers. The way that our nation was was founded on Judeo-Christian tenets and Judeo-Christian belief. So these two completely would would be seemingly be polarized. Uh, uh, entities, if you will, have come together with a common enemy that they they seek to essentially undermine and cut the legs out from under. That is the Judeo-Christian principles and, and on the larger scheme. And so they've come together. And as long as this uh, political alliance, this socio-political alliance is convenient, uh, they will work together in order to undermine uh, Christianity. I, I've got a, a little message for liberals out there, though, you know, as soon as you reach your goal, uh, Ron, who's the first people that that the, is, the, the uh, you know, Islamo fascists are going to start beheading? Uh, it's the very liberals who are engaging in in uh, behaviors and, and stand for behaviors that uh, that they abhor. That, that would be certainly would I would think common sense would lead one to believe that anyway. Ah, but you use the term common sense. And <laughs> I think that it's important to note that, as you pointed out, there is a common enemy here. There is a target. And we know that uh, God will prevail. So maybe that maybe somewhere deep down in their consciousness, they realize that as long as we are still around and we give them a, a target to aim at, that they won't become a target. Uh, but you're right. If they do take this to the logical conclusion, if they succeeded in eradicating uh, God and Christ from the face of the earth and somehow got to the point where we were no longer a threat to them, they would realize that they've suddenly become dinner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So. Well, in my article... I wrote, uh, but who is this common enemy? Uh, well, it too is signified by an alliance. This alliance, however, is most simpatico. It consists of Christians and Jews worldwide. It is, uh, it too, is built around a shared cause. But unlike that of the Islamo-progressive axis, this cause intends freedom, not tyranny, Representative democracy, not control. Most importantly, this Judeo-Christian cause is built upon the rock of truth given us by the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the living, not the dead, the great I am. And folks at Liberty Council, uh, we are considered a joy and an honor to be called upon by that very God to serve him, to stand up for the truth of his word in scripture, to further biblical principles uh, in our culture, which are under assault by this Islamo-progressive axis. We have uh, secular socialists holding uh, positions of power in government who are pushing an agenda that undermines our founding principles, undermines the Judeo-Christian principles upon which uh, the historical record unequivocally uh, approves uh, our nation was founded upon. Go to lc.org to become part of Liberty Council's team. Ask for the book, Take Back America, written by Matthew Staver, chairman and founder of Liberty Council. lc.org or give us a call, 1-800-671-1776. The book is Take Back America. Help us at Liberty Council to take back America for the principles upon which she was founded.